O God, whose Son, Jesus, is the good shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of the good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. letter of John. We know love by this, that he laid 
down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love bind to anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. find the words of Jesus in today's gospel about the Good Shepherd to be a warm, reassuring message delivered from Jesus to his disciples. While it can have a glow of safety and warmth for us, Jesus is actually continuing a conflict here with the religious authorities, which they have started with the man born blind after Jesus has restored the man's sight. When the authorities cast the man out, Jesus finds him and receives him as his own, as sheep, his sheep. The man born blind receives not only physical sight, but also spiritual insight. While Jesus tells the powerful opponents that in their insistence that they are able to see, they remain spiritually blind. He illustrates the conflict 
uh, of John 9 in John 10 with the contrasting images of the true good shepherd and in, on the one hand and the thieves and bandits who oppose him on the other. The false shepherds who do not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climb in another way and do not have the best interests of the sheep at heart. But Jesus, who is metaphorically both the gate to the sheepfold and the shepherd of the sheep, offers abundant life. So Jesus draws and compares two individuals, the good shepherd and the hired hand. They represent two completely different kinds of leadership because that's what this passage is all about, is leadership. And um, in the eyes of this fledgling Christian community, there's no comparison between the two kinds of leadership. One, which is modeled by the, by the Pharisees, is portrayed as, by Jesus as exclusive and self-serving. And the other, modeled by Jesus Christ, is a reading of the Old Testament shepherd tradition that conveyed its true meaning to be a shepherd which is, it means to sacrifice yourself for the welfare of the community, to give one's life so that others may live. I've been studying sheep, <laughs> and uh, I found out some interesting things, but uh, a good shepherd knows his own and they know him. Sheep are what are known as flock animals. They like to be together. They don't do so well on their own. There's safety in numbers, and sheep seem to know this. So they tend to spend a lot of time together, and they find a lot of benefit from, from being together. And we as humans are flock animals too. We like to be together. We like to gather in groups. There's this uh, innate drive to surround ourselves with like-minded people in, in sports, or in music, at work, at school. And um, the, we, tend, we tend to flock together. We're a community that recognizes that there are important reasons to be together. The, the pandemic hasn't changed this. It has been a challenge, of course, in these recent years of social distancing, but it's no less important to find ways to be together. At St. David's, we found a way when we started an online daily conference service on March 20th, 2020, and today we are at 1,500 consecutive nights of flock flocking together online. But what is unique about congregations is that we are not necessarily birds of a feather. We are all part of this St. David's community, but beyond that, we have a number of differences. We're different ages, we grew up in different parts of the country, we have different tastes in music, we support different sports teams, we have varying political views and on and on. We are not exactly birds of a feather, except that we are all followers of Jesus. And so we are here flocking together as best we can. When you spend time studying scripture, it becomes very obvious that God's plan is for us to be together in community, in a community of faith like this one, we remember that the first thing Jesus did when he began his ministry was to gather a group of disciples around him. And the early church, after Jesus is crucified and raised, spent a lot of time together. In the book of Acts, we learn what life was like for those early Christians. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, 
praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. Christians are supposed to spend time together. We're not intended to be on our own. That's why Jesus created the church. That is one of its primary purposes, so that we sheep can come together and be kept safe, and so that we can join together in seeking guidance from our shepherd, especially in uncertain times like these. Which brings us to another way that we are like sheep. It turns out that sheep are very good at hearing, and especially at hearing the voice of the shepherd. There was a practice typical in Jesus' time for shepherds to get together with, with other shepherds and their flocks of sheep during the day. A bunch of shepherds all together, lots and lots of sheep, usually in some kind of a watering hole. It was noisy, it was chaotic to say the least, but at the end of the day, the shepherds would call for their sheep and the sheep would follow their own shepherds to a safe place to sleep because they knew their voice. In the midst of all that chaos and all those competing voices, the sheep would hear their shepherd's voice and follow their shepherd. And that is what we're urged to do too. In the midst of all the noise and chaos of our lives, um, excuse me, uh, what, yeah, excuse me, excuse me. In the, in, oh, in, in the midst of all the noise and care, I changed fonts. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I cannot read this font. <laughs> so whatever you do, if you're going to give a sermon, don't use Aptos. <laughs> it's, like, it's much better to use Calibri. But it's a lot easier to read in front of you. Um, so in, 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 uh, in, in, in the midst of all the noise and chaos of our daily lives, Jesus is urging us to listen to our shepherd, our good shepherd, and follow him. There, and there are plenty of competing voices these days, all clamoring for our attention. Voices from our TVs and our computers and our phones and our tablets and so on. But there's only one voice that truly matters to our soul, and that is the voice of the shepherd, the voice of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Sheep are good at listening to the voice of their shepherd, and we need to be to now more than ever. And another characteristic of sheep is that they are natural followers. They don't like to be pushed. They prefer to be led. And it is their shepherd who leads them. We have all probably heard that sheep are not very smart. Adam, but that turns out to, not to be true. Sheep supporters claim that it is a rumor started by cattle ranchers. <laughs> <laughs> because sheep don't behave like cows. Cows are herded from the rear by cowboys. They yell and prod the cows to get them going in the right direction. But when you stand behind sheep and make a bunch of noise, they just try to get behind you again. So some cattle ranchers assumed that they were stupid animals when in fact, sheep simply prefer to be left. Cows can be pushed, sheep must be led. And when you think about it, that's really not that stupid. Sheep trust their shepherd to go where the shepherd goes. And they let the shepherd go first to make sure the way is safe and then to invite them to follow. And isn't that what Jesus is really asking of us, to be his followers? He's not going to push us. He's not going to force us. Instead, Jesus just keeps calling us. <laughs> In many and various ways. And inviting us over and over to follow him. And we listen for his voice. 
He promises to lead us, to protect us, even to lay down his life for us. And he invites us to trust him, to trust him and to follow him. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, but the one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and he was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and conscious pilot. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in the morning of our sisters. He ascended to heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, made knowledge from the baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We go through the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With deep gratitude and reverent joy, we pray to you, God of resurrection. Our neighbors, our colleagues, our acquaintances, and for the stranger and the isolated, we pray. For the community of St. David's, for the Episcopal Church and all faith communities, and for all who know you by a different name or no name at all, we pray. For the victims, survivors, and inflictors of systemic injustices that starve, still fear, and oppress, we pray. Have died in the hope of the 
resurrection, especially Penny Berthold, Joan Benny, Dorothy Irons, Drake Limer, John McDonald, and Bill Matthews, we pray. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Charity is taking uh, communion too. Eileen Harbour today, who I was ordained with 11 years ago. <laughs> In the name of this congregation, I send you forth, bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many of our one body, because we share the one bread and the one cup. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us through these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements. Good morning. Diane Curley here, senior warden this year, and welcome to St. David's. We're so happy you're able to be here today so that we can all worship together in the community. And I'll say like a bunch of sheep, right? <laughs> Got our theme going here. Um, but yeah, so anyways, I also want to invite you downstairs after the service for our State of the Vestry. Um, and you might say, well, what the heck is that? And what it is, um, David and I, along with Stephen and Vita, will be sharing um, excitement, um, important information about what the Vestry's been up to these past just three months. I, I looked at the camera and I thought, oh my gosh, it seems longer. <laughs> but it's only been three months, um, the end of January. And what exciting things we have set for the future that we want to, and we want to hear from you too. We hope to have a question and answer session at the end um, of the uh, presentation. And uh, the other thing I want to mention is that there is the financial report, as I said, and also some exciting um, endowment committee news. So stay tuned. And so, in the words of George Gray, who knows who George Gray is? Oh, I do. Yay! <laughs> come on down. Yeah, come on down. So, so come on down. And I didn't plant that. Good morning. My name is Ann Robinson, and speaking this morning on behalf of our newcomer committee, I just wanted to make sure to invite all of you next Sunday, following the 9:30 service, downstairs for our newcomer brunch. We are so very lucky to be um, inviting and welcoming 19 new members to St. David's. So that is something to celebrate. So please join us. You don't have to bring anything. Just show up and be ready to drink coffee and eat pancakes. Good morning. I'm Holden Niles. I want to make sure all of you know about Isaiah. Um, St. Davis is actually a member church in Isaiah, and I'm our representative. And if you don't know, Isaiah is a multiracial, statewide, nonpartisan coalition of faith communities fighting for racial and economic justice in Minnesota. And today we are hosting a forum, um, our district that we are in, in Edina and Wyzetta and a bunch of cities, is District 6 um, for the Hennepin County Commissioner. Um, there's going to be a special election because the current one steps down. And so we're having all six of the candidates here today at 2.30. They're gonna discuss who they are and answer some questions that we have for them about affordable housing, climate action, and youth programming. And the Board of Commissioners' duties include administration, taxes, health and human services, environment, public safety, housing, transit, and transportation. Their budget in 2023 was $2.7 billion and their funding decisions touch every aspect of our lives. And so this is a really big deal. Um, it's nonpartisan, and it's a chance for you to get to know 
these candidates and then vote. Um, there'll be a special election to narrow it down to two, and then there'll be the actual election is in May. I think it's the 14th. I have to double check that. Um, but it's today at 2.30, and um, there was a registration, but it's okay to just show up. I'd love to see you there. Thanks. Good morning, my name is Scott, and I don't have a title here, but, uh, David, but that's okay. Uh, if you can feel the electricity crackling through the air, it's because of the fact that the variety show is this Friday, okay? And so I've got cards, notes here, and I'm kind of doing this for everybody. So here's how you can participate. Number one, buy a ticket, it's only $10. Uh, if you can't be here, buy a ticket anyway, give it to a friend or do something else like this. Secondly, come perform or share your talent. I'm not sure if those are separate uh, attributes or not, but uh, uh, we have, I think, 13 or 14 acts right now. We've got room for more. Uh, last week, I did a small shame uh, to a number of people. I got two or three of those people to sign up. This week, it's big time shame, and so we'll hopefully get a few more. So uh, the other part of this is, I believe that this is gonna be a silent auction item, right, the baskets are. And so what we have are baskets, uh, and they're gonna be filled with goodies, and you can donate on But now, of course, those baskets have to be filled. And so this is how you can also participate by donating a basket, at least the contents of this, we've got the baskets. So we're asking anybody who would like to contribute between $40 to $100, to uh, put it like a thematic type of stuff in the basket, and if you'd say, boy, I'd like to participate, but I just don't have the time to do that, that's okay. Go out and buy a gift certificate, and we'll put it in the basket. We're not, you know, we're, we're, we're fundable as far as uh, assets are here concerned. And lastly, um, you know, in terms of preparing for this night, uh, Roger has volunteered his time on Wednesday, uh, any time between Four and 10 o'clock at night or something like that. <laughs> uh, and he will uh, work with you uh, if you need an accompaniment or uh, some type of music for him to play on the side. And then also though, if you're gonna do the digital type of thing in that, we'd like to have that voted prior to Friday. Uh, and so as he likes to be called downtown Polly P here, it's gonna be the stage manager that night. And he'd like to get that information ahead of time. So just remember, it's a great time. I think you got at least 50 uh, tickets already sold for this. You were here last year. Uh, you missed a great show. And I promise you, well, at least be equal to what it was last year. Wait a minute. Oh, wait, oh, wait a minute. I forgot the most important thing. Boy, am I glad. What time does this thing start? I should have known that, shouldn't I? I knew it was 5.30, I just want to see if you were on top of this. But 5.30, oh, I forgot the most important part of this, food. We are going to have a taco bar, then we're going to have a little show mealy bop, and then after that, the most important thing, ice cream bar. So it's going to be a night of fun, entertainment, and galleries. So, join us. Thank you. My name is Anna, I'm your children youth minister. Um, on behalf of the youth who are planning um, Youth-Led Sunday, which is May 5th, I want to invite all of you, if you wish, to participate in, by wearing either tie-dye or rainbow, okay? Wear tie-dye or rainbow to church on May 5th. This is, this is the request of the youth. Um, you might be asking, where are they today? Well, they're at Tech. Um, they're over at St. Stephen's at Tech. Um, and so be thinking about them too as they wrap up their weekend there, um, the high schoolers. And then just one more thing um, for you who are helping with that worship, we're gonna have a quick meeting at six o'clock um, this Wednesday before youth group, and then we're having youth group here at St. David's from 6.30 to 8.30. Good morning, I'm Chris Sarda. Um, inviting everyone to a family bike ride that's three weeks from yesterday. Uh, it's also a twofer because this is a charity event for multiple sclerosis. Um, it's part of the larger MS bike event that happens on the same day, but we kind of partitioned from that and do our own version here at St. David's, partnered with the place where I work, Carl Westwood. Um, it'll be at 9 in the morning. We go about 15 miles. It's 8 miles out to Lake Riley, 8 miles back. Pretty casual. Um, and it's great that you bring the kids along too. So um, look in the weekly uh, email. There's also information on how you can donate to MS as well. Thanks. Life abounds. Um, 
The only other um, announcement that I want to share is that this Saturday, we will be participating in the, in the local service of confirmation with receptions with our bishop at St. Mark's Cathedral this Saturday at 2 o'clock. Um, you might have heard in the prayers that we will be, four people from St. David's will be received into the Episcopal Church at that service on Saturday. Um, Becky Sweeley, Patty Jerkovich, Marilyn Clark, and Roger Stratton. And Roger Stratton also will be one of our musicians leading us on Saturday. So it's going to be a glorious day, Saturday at 2 at St. Mark's Cathedral. All right, please stand uh, for the blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds and in the knowledge of love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sanctifier, be with you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.